Hello, welcome to part three of the Human Prospect Lecture. We open with an image of the Great Mother, the bounty of life, the glory of nature, everything that we can celebrate on this planet in terms of being alive and having evolved here. We also open with a poem on the glory of life on Earth and the glory of the Great Mother, who is the symbol of this life. This is taken from Sower and the Seed. We ask, why is mankind destroying itself? And does it have the potential of destroying all life on this planet, which has evolved over billions of years? We anticipate very radical changes in every aspect of our society in the coming period. Economic, political, military, ecological, are all cycles which are now evolving at a fast pace, accelerating into a global crisis in all dimensions. We hope you find this third part of the Human Prospect Lecture instructive. The miracle of life on Earth, and uh, there's a few lines there. Mother of all, in you we trust. This world evolved from soul, from stars to Earth, from Earth to stars, such glory we behold. So we are the creature destroying the life system that sustains ourselves and all life. Why has nothing been done? Why have carbon emissions continued to rise? We've known it since the 1960s. It's like the tobacco industry, isn't it? You know, we've known it for, for, for you know, a long, long time. It's been scientifically proven. But the tobacco industry has fought a solid battle and is still selling its, peddling its, its drug. I think so, yes. I think so. So, in other words, it's capitalism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know. We are consuming that because it's not my investment, because there is a demand of that. Yes, I mean, you might say, for example, um, uh, you might look at it philosophically and say, why is nothing being done? You could say, are humans in opposition to the planet? Are we fundamentally in opposition to it? Do we really hate life? Are we life haters? I know, but lots of us like to pretend. We, we like our own lives. We like to be happy, don't we? But the rest of life? Are we suicidal as a population? Are we suicidal? Uh, is there a deep death impulse inside the human species that we're willing to actually, with full knowledge, know that we're destroying the life of this planet and, and potentially all life on it? And we're willing to do it. For what? Is, it our, is there an unconscious death impulse? Is it just that we're short-term, short-termism? We can't think long-term. Is that, is that the reason? We can't think past our own nose. Is that it? But most people will, 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 will work all their lives and invest for their children. They think the next generation. But in the case of the Earth, we stop, don't we? Uh, we stop beyond our own immediate biological int interest. Do you think we can set up a cell, really, in the world? <laughs> Mm, very interesting. Mm. Well, it's it's not not <laughs> and it doesn't matter because the, you know, the older you get, you think life goes up. Why bother? <laughs> you're going to die, right? You know, you're going to die soon. It's not really my problem. Well, but what happens if you're not? Yeah. If you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Hindus don't believe that. Well, that's the <laughs> they think you come back. <laughs> in a worse state. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will be in a worse state. It's that. true. I would, I would counter that actually because I think if you've got grandchildren and you see them coming along and you have your own journey on earth and you've appreciated that journey, then you want them to have the same opportunities and the same amazing experience. Okay. Is it lack of leadership from a creative minority? Remember Toynbee's idea of the creative minorities being the, the way forward? I mean, I, I, as, as, as in the mass, aren't we just really, we, we float along, but we, we, we respond to creative leadership. You know, I always believe, you know, when Obama came to power, I mean, he came to power with more credentials and more charisma and more backing than anyone since Kennedy, perhaps more than Kennedy. If it, one man 
could be a woman now, it'd probably have to be a woman next, but if one man has stood up and said, we're going to end oil and the combustion engine and the use of oil on the planet, and we're going to do it by the end of the decade, he could have done it. The American president, black to boot, with tremendous whoomph behind the whole thing, the enterprise, in other words, creative minority leadership is vital. It's a, nice, it's a nice move, and unfortunately, if you look at the figures, I, I looked them up after Macron said this. I thought, nice one, Macron. So I looked up the figures for uh, projections from the car industry of the use of electrical vehicles by 2040, and <laughs> it's approaching 80 percent anyway. So really, he's but making a safe prediction there. I think. Maybe it's happening anyway. Maybe, maybe that revolution it's is underway. That New technologies may be some part of the way forward, yes. And we'll ex we will look into that in our last lecture. And it's a debate because Lovelock would say, in, in contrast to that, that in actual fact we've cooked our, cooked our whatever the phrase is, uh, we, we're already cooked and it's, uh, the world's going to get hotter because the runaway carbon effects are inevitable despite no matter what we do now. It's too late, he says. So uh, whether new technologies would save us, which modify car uh, pollution, which is only a, a, a fraction of the, p of the general pollution. I mean, planes, for example, have increased their pollution in the last 10 years from 5% of global pollution, carbon pollution, to 10%. So a, a doubling of their, of their amount. Um, uh, whether it's possible with new technology is something we'll examine in the final, th in the final thing. I wonder if an American president had got, had got up and said something for the whole globe. I wonder what would have happened well, to. Give him a peace prize almost as soon as he became president. That was strange. Wasn't that it? was strange. Yes. <laughs> yes. But what about they hold? There is there is a, a minority minimalism, you know, tiny house, three bed over there. So it, there is a, a minority movement which is trying to get another direction away from the consumers. Is it possible? Meanwhile, China builds a new coal-fired mm. power station oh. each week. And a silk, and a silk yeah. road on the way. And still growing, yeah. The question, the, the real question is, following that one, is what have you done about it? Mm. So yeah. what, in other words, we all, we're still talking about what other people can give us. Mm. Uh, Don't, are you asking me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my plane on Monday. <laughs> Uh, Lovelock says it doesn't matter what we do as individuals. Mm. Well, he's, 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 gone, <laughs> 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 he's, 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 he's been quite interesting on this debate. He, he's trying to provide evidence that as individuals recycling our rubbish is just making us feel better. <laughs> and, that, uh, and that these efforts of that individual consumption where we think we're being more ethical are just tokens. And that the real, the real game playing is in you know, energy production on a massive scale, um, and whether we're willing to change any of that. Well, where's the tipping point then? Do we even say we passed the tipping He's saying we're past it. We're, we're, we're we were at it now. Around this time, yes. He says we're at it now. But if he, if he, I mean, the danger of preaching to spare is that it yeah. is a joke. Is it? That, that's the question we'll have to, we'll have to take up. You know, I, I had a cancer diagnosis recently. But you can enter into despair after that, can't you? You can say, right, I'm going to die. I give up. Well, what's the point? But some people would rather know and then try and find a way in which they can fight it. Well, that might be the same with the Earth. Maybe it's only by really accepting that something's going to happen and is happening in front of us and feeling it and not trying to make it sound as if, oh, somebody else is going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. That radical change might happen. So, for example, one of Lovelock's radical statements is that 
it's no use trying to recycle your rubbish and think that you're going to save the planet. You know, you're just making yourself feel better. It makes no difference at all. And same with your car, and same with getting on the plane, and so on. He says these things make very little difference at all. He says that what he says what's, what's going to happen is inevitable in his view. I'm not saying this is true now, but in his view, a real pro prophet and expert in this field, and that um, and, and this catastrophe will happen. So if it's going to happen, if you're going to get the cancer diagnosis, then prepare for it now, and you might survive. You know, if, 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 so, for example, he says, if, since, since he's British, he says, if Britain really understood about rising waters and climate change and so on, and what's going to happen, and, and prepared not for sustainability and recycling and, and changing to wind turbines and minor things, uh, he says, what he calls wasting our time, he says, and got down to survival and said, this is going to happen, how are we going to survive it? Then you're into a different philosophy entirely. <laughs> Move to the high ground. <laughs> well, you know, how you would readjust civilization in the light of this certain, no you know, near certain knowledge and prepare for it now, rather than tinkering along thinking someone else is going to change it around the corner. It's a different philosophy entirely. It's far more realistic. Okay, um, the, why has nothing been done? Is it that we're divided in separate nations? You know, this democracy, I mean, it's a massive thing when, when, when Blair and Bush invaded Iraq, right? Massive, and everyone's condemned them for it. But what happens when someone does flow, uh, throw the first nuclear bomb? And, and people say, well, why didn't you do something about it? This is no laughing matter. You know, thermonuclear destruction. <laughs> so we may not be able to live in democracies and separate. Once these things, if these things are going to happen, then our democratic structures or our, you know, at least that, you know, certain nations exist and have their autonomy, don't they? You can't invade this nation. Well, actually, can you invade that nation if they've got nuclear weapons and intend to use them against the rest of the world? You're into a different ball game. You see, we, our, our democracies and our countries' boundaries, and our um, it, may, it may be new forms of totalitarian control will have to develop in order. You know, uh, out of crisis. We don't know, I doubt if the democratic systems and our systems of country boundaries and so on will survive the coming events. I can't see it politically. I think that there'll be radical change on all levels, economic, political, social, environmental, population, country boundaries, everything will, will, will be changed in the, in the new system ahead.